Hello and welcome. I have received a few requests to demonstrate how the backing tracks are created on this channel. At the risk of alienating the majority of a limited audience, some of you asked for it, so here it is. It starts with a record. It might be a nostalgic favorite, a bona fide classic, or a long lost guilty pleasure but there's usually at least some bit of the record that sparks the thought, how did they do that? As an example, with its simple bass and guitar hooks that open the song and leading through to sublimely sophisticated string and horn arrangement, the Temptations recording of My Girl has always been a personal favorite. Here is a quick overview of how I created my cover recording of a backing track. With very few exceptions, Jack's Tracks is a one-person operation done in my spare time in a 10 foot by 10 foot bedroom on an old iMac computer. My first step is always to import an audio file of the original recording into my digital audio workstation of choice, Logic. A digital audio workstation, or DAW, is basically a multi-track audio recorder in a computer. Since most old records were not made with a metronome or a click track to keep a steady tempo, there is always some fluctuation in the tempo or speed of the song. Once the original recording is in logic, the program can automatically detect all of those tempo changes and create a map of the tempo so the recreation follows all of the natural speeding up and slowing down that the original musicians performed. The next step is research to try to learn which instruments may have been used on the original recording. In the case of My Girl, there is actual film footage from the song's 1964 session which shows the record includes drums, bass, Fender Precision played by James Jameson, two guitars, Gibson S175 played by Robert White and a Fender Telecaster played by Joe Messina, piano, two trombones, two trumpets, two saxophones, and a small string section. Not seen in the video but clearly audible on the record are finger snaps and tambourine. Each instrument requires its own track so my girl will likely be comprised of at least nine tracks. Figuring out the parts for those instruments can be a tedious procedure, particularly for a person like myself who is blessed with neither perfect nor relative pitch. People who have heard me attempt to sing will likely say I am tone deaf and they're not far off the mark. Any road, the only instrument that I can marginally play is guitar so every other part on my backing tracks is recreated from scratch using virtual instruments, either digital samples or digital modeling software. Also, since I do not play keyboards, every note on any virtual instrument is input one at a time onto what is called the piano roll which is a grid for each track that extends for the length of the song. In the piano roll of a digital audio workstation, music notes are represented by these rectangles. Each rectangle is one event or note. The higher the vertical position of an event on the grid, the higher the pitch of the note. You can see a representation of a keyboard on the left which will help let us know which note is which. The wider the width of an event, the longer the note will ring out or sustain. The narrower the width of a note, the shorter it will sustain. The different colors represent different MIDI velocities which influence both the volume and timbre of the triggered note. Now, back to my girl. I usually try to find either isolated tracks or instrumental mixes to clarify which instrument is playing which part. Unfortunately, as was the case with my girl, isolated tracks are not often available so hours may be spent listening to the original record to try to decipher each component on the arrangement. The first part I usually try to recreate is the drums. I happen to use a couple of products of sampled drums called Superior Drummer and Easy Drummer for most of my drum and percussion sounds. As mentioned before, I do not play drums so recreating a drum part can be a tedious process of entering one hit at a time. If the song is in 4-4 or common time, I will often create a basic backbeat pattern of a kick drum on beats 1 and 3 and snare drum hits on beats 2 and 4 across the length of the song. 
if the original song seems to feature a relatively consistent hi-hat or ride cymbal pattern across most of the song, I might add that as well. Then, it's a matter of focusing on the drum part within the original recording and editing my basic pattern to try to match what the real drummer might have played including adding fills, embellishments, and crash cymbals. After the drums and percussion, I'll proceed to the bass, then any piano, organ, or other keyboards. On all instruments, I try to see if I have a sampled or modeled virtual instrument that matches what was on the original. For instance, when working on a mid-60s Beatles or Stones song, I know the drums were likely mid-60s Ludwig drums so I'll try to find a sample drum kit that matches Ringo's or Charlie's including the size of the drums and cymbals. For my girl, I used a plug-in emulation of Motown's All Tech Preamp that adds some of the characteristic grit to most 60s Motown drum tracks. When recreating an organ part, it's important to try to match the original draw bar settings as well as whenever there might be a change in speed on a Leslie. These may be manipulated after the fact using automation in the door. The last virtual instruments I usually address are any strings or horns. To make the sample performance a little more lifelike, articulations, either with key switches or articulation sets that I've created and saved in Logic, are used. Articulations are a palette of expressive tools that a real performer might use. Articulations include crescendos, vibrato, grace notes, staccatos, pizzicatos, etc. Applying varying articulations to sampled instruments can help make the performance a little more believable. A genuine keyboard player might be able to apply articulations in real time but I usually add them one note at a time after I think I have the correct notes on the piano roll. Once the virtual instrument tracks have all been created, it's time to plug in either a microphone to record any acoustic guitars or plug an electric guitar directly into the computer where I use virtual amplifier models to create the tone of the guitar. As with the drums and keyboards, contemporaneous photos from recording sessions or any live or promotional footage of the artist from the same period can help inform my choice of which amplifier model to use. In the case of my girl, it's a well-known fact that the confined space of the snake pit at Hitsville Studio A in Detroit offered no room for guitar amplifiers so guitarists almost always plug their guitars directly into the recording console via a custom-made direct box. Knowing that, I used a console preamp simulation on the guitars without a virtual amplifier speaker combination. In the film of the session, I noticed that Robert White played the signature guitar if using his thumb, not with a pick so I was sure to do the same when I recorded my version of his famous riff. Paying attention to small details adds up. Once every virtual instrument has been programmed and any guitars have been recorded, then it is time to create a mix. Mixing is the process of using volume controls, equalizers, aka tone controls, compressors, saturation, echoes, reverbs, modulation effects, etc., to sculpt the sound of all of the separate instruments into a more coherent whole. When trying to recreate an existing recording, this requires a lot of what is called reference listening where you compare the original to the recreation over and over and over and over again. Eventually, I reach the point where I say this is as far as my abilities will take me at this time. This mix is done. Depending on the complexity of the original recording, from start to finish, each backing track may take from 8 to 48 hours spread across a few days. There you have it. If you have made it this far, thank you for your interest and patience. Although I almost always prefer to collaborate, I hope you can see that, with a little perseverance, using today's technology, it's possible that even mediocre musicians can make recordings and have fun by themselves.